just age today, and we do not uh, take that for granted. We do not ignore that, but it is something that's very uh, much on our hearts and our minds. Uh, many Americans have lost their life, as well as there is many that we don't even really have a true count of how many is missing or been held hostage tonight, along with those in Israel that their world has been turned upside down. There's a lot of noise that's going on in our world today, and this is not about politics. This is not about a land grab that some would like to say that it is, but this is basically pure evil. We read of it in Scripture. We know of a time that's coming. Many began to try to figure out what time it is when they start hearing and seeing things such as this. But here we understand very clearly that when you begin to read through Matthew chapter 24, the Lord begins to lay out a very clear explanation of things that would come. And there's a passage, and you start getting at the very beginning of that, he's talking to his disciples in Matthew 24, and he says that, when you hear of wars and rumors of wars and you see all of the things that we're seeing today, pestilence, earthquakes, and diverse places, he said it is the beginning of sorrows. We have been in that season for some time, but we are seeing an escalation today. And today, while it will try to be branded and presented to people all across this globe in different manners and different fashion, please hear me tonight. What we are seeing displayed is an emboldening of nothing more than an antichrist spirit that is trying to strike fear in the hearts of men and women, as well as to try to take his place on this earth prematurely. But can I tell you, God is still in control, but we have a responsibility, and our responsibility is to pray one for another. This is not a time to bury our head in the sands, but this is the time for us to realize that especially over the last few years, our nation has been overran by illegal immigration. And I understand that we have a broken system, but I also understand this tonight. Everybody that's came into our country is not our friend but they have been strategically placed. And so tonight, if there's ever been a time that we are to pray, it is now. And I don't say that to strike fear into you, but you will find tonight, if you want to be honest and real, that where we get most of our information is not giving us information. They're giving us their spin. They're not giving us real accurate information. The accurate information, you have to be on the ground to understand, and it's been squashed before it ever gets the airways. And I've received some information from those in New York and other places, and the reality is that there is a great uncertainty across our land tonight. And there is great worry amongst many individuals of what could be and might be. But can I tell you, I do not operate in a place of worry, but I operate in a place where I know that God is. But I would say this, let us not bury our heads in the sand. We have a responsibility, and that responsibility is to take care of your family, to take care of your community. God does not want any of us to be doormats for the enemy to wipe their feet on but we are instructed and I please take this with the counsel of the Lord but we are instructed to resist the devil and we are also instructed to occupy till he comes now for the military individuals in this room, you understand. The rest of you figure it out by letting the Holy Spirit teach you and lead you and guide you. What I'm saying tonight is this. We will not sit down. We will not be quiet. And we will not shut up. But we will stand on the side of right and we will fight for our communities. We will fight for our nation and we will fight for our families. 
and we will do that through prayer, yes, we will. But at the same time, there is a real reality that there is people that you and I love that is in a very dangerous place tonight across this nation, especially if they're living in specific areas. So tonight, we not only need to pray for Israel, we don't need just to pray for those in Gaza, but we need to pray for those across our nation. Because let me remind you what the leaders of Iran have said all openly and more than once, that Israel is the little Satan and the United States is the big Satan. Please hear me. This isn't a time to play, but this is a time to be real men and women of God that says we're going to put on the whole armor of God and we're going to withstand in the evil day. And we do that by being men and women of faith. So tonight, I know that there's a lot of, and what we're seeing today, what we're hearing, we cannot get our minds wrapped around. You know, I have, just about 11 months ago, I was in Armenia, and most of you know that, and we was on, we was just a few miles from where they was fighting, and we had to deal with families that had lost their sons in the battlefield, and it's heartbreaking, it's, it's overwhelming, uh, but today what we're seeing is not just a battlefield, but it is a slaughter. An innocent life has been taken and destroyed and targeted, and it's unacceptable. And the world must understand it's unacceptable. Amen? So let us be those that will stand and stand on the side of right for the people of Israel. Thousands of people are displaced. Thousands of people have lost their life. Thousands are injured tonight. Let us not take for granted the freedom that we have. and Let's fight for it. Amen? It's not my message tonight, but it could be. But with that being said, I'm going to ask you to turn with me to Isaiah chapter 26. Isaiah 26. I'd give you a title, but I don't really have one. So we're going to go to Isaiah 26, and then we're going to turn over into our Bible together tonight. And we are going to go on a journey, and I'm going to take you with me uh, to many places for the next few moments. I do feel like the Lord would like to speak to us. I've got a lot of things I could say. I've been spending a lot of time at my desk and in the Word trying to prepare for conferences. We'll be in Armenia again in just a few weeks. Please be praying for that. We have a lot of things going on. We have a meeting tomorrow concerning that. So we just want the direction of the Lord with that region being so unstable. We'll see what God has. But as of now, we're still planning to be there. Uh, so whatever God wants, uh, that's what we want. So I want to appreciate prayers for that. But Isaiah chapter number 26, it says, In that day, beginning in verse number 1, shall this song be sung in the land of Judah. We have a strong city, salvation with God, a point for walls and build works. Open ye the gates that the righteous nation which keepeth the truth may enter in. But then here we go, verse 3 and verse number 4 where we really want to be tonight. Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. Trust ye in the Lord forever, for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. Let me read verse number four again. Trust ye in the Lord forever. Tell your neighbor forever. For in the Lord Jehovah is, tell them, everlasting strength strength. Amen. Now, before we go any further, let us turn to Isaiah chapter number 40, verse number 28. We read this on Sunday evening, I believe, but it's fitting for us to revisit again tonight. Isaiah 40, verse number 28, and the following, hast thou not known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, Feigneth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding, but he giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he does what? He increaseth their strength. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight for your word. We thank you for its anointing. Lord, I pray over the next few moments that you would anoint this vessel to speak your word, to teach for a few moments. Lord, because of the season where we find ourselves, we stand knowing that you are doing 
what needs to be done, but yet we know that there's things we should do. And Lord, today we know this, that fear paralyzes us. And therefore, we are going to break off any spirit of fear that would try to come upon your people today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Lord, I pray that you would give us an understanding that there is a peace and that there is a strength that we can have even in times such as this. And the church says amen and amen. Thank you for honoring the word of the Lord tonight as we dive in together. We know this tonight, that there is power in the word of the Lord. How many knows that to be true? Amen. You say, what, what do we mean by that is this, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God, meaning this, that before the foundations of the earth, that there was the word. It is, we find throughout scriptures that he says, I am the beginning and I am the end. I am alpha and omega. But we know this tonight, living a life of peace in a troubled world can only be obtained when we put on the mind of Christ. In order for us to put on the mind of Christ, please hear me, there has to be a process of reformation of the mind. Paul writes in Romans chapter 12, he simply tells us not to be... Uh, conformed to the world, but to be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. How many knows that that's not something we do occasionally, but that's something we have to do continually? How many knows that the mind is a very powerful thing? Please hear me. If you allow your mind to run rapid, you will get yourself in trouble real quick. But you and I are instructed in the word of the Lord that we are to put on the mind of Christ. And please hear me, putting on the mind of Christ is an essential step in personal reformation. Right action, right thinking is something that will set you on the course into the place where you're walking in the will of God and the power of God. We have to, all of us, doesn't matter how many times we hear a preacher preach, doesn't matter how many times we go to special meetings and things of that nature, we have to all consciously come to a place where we examine the value of Scripture. Then we have to affirm them, and then we have to then systematically begin to implement them until we develop a habit of becoming biblically minded. It is not enough for us to be biblically minded on Sunday and then think like the world Monday through Saturday. You're going to live as a double minded individual and the bible says that a double-minded man is what unstable in some of his ways in all of his ways there is a great presence of unstable individuals unstable environments all around us today and it comes back to the simple fact is that we don't really know who we are nor do we really know what we believe. And if we're not careful, we will self-identify as something, but yet we don't really have true understanding of what that is. But we know that the Bible teaches us, as we read tonight in Isaiah 26 and 3 and 4, it says, Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in the Lord. May I ask this question tonight? What have you been thinking about today? You say, I've been thinking about a lot of things. Well, that's wonderful. We have to do life. We have to do those things. But where's your mind been stayed on? Has it been stayed on what's going to happen in the future? Or has it been stayed on that God is with me? Can I tell you that when you and I get a place where we understand that his word is forever settled, when we get to a place where we understand that it does not matter what's going on around us, but that God is who his word says he is, then we can rest in knowing that, you know what, uh, we don't have to give thought for tomorrow. The Bible actually tells us that tomorrow will give thought for itself. It just says, live in the moment. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And all of these other things will fall, will fall into place where they need to be. Matthew 6.33 is a very powerful passage of Scripture. Many people wish it wasn't there. 
But the reality is it's one of the most liberating passages of Scripture. And you say, but, you, but preacher, you, I'm, I'm just wired different. No, listen, the enemy wants to wire you differently. But as a man of God, as a woman of God, you have to understand that when we receive the gift of salvation, he gives us then the opportunity to take off the old man and to put on the new man. The new man is created in the likeness and the image of God. That means this. It also is, if it's developed and if it's nurtured and if it's brought to the place that it needs to be, you'll begin to have the heart of God. You'll begin to think as God thinks. Notice with me, uh, but all of this process starts with the mind. Proverbs chapter number 23, verse number seven says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. You know, if you're thinking, oh, I'm not going to make it, then you're going to be somebody that's discouraged. If you're thinking in your heart, well, I, I hope, I hope I can make it, then you're still walking in a place far below of what God has for you. But when you're a man or a woman that goes to the passages of God's word and you begin to see his faithfulness, you begin to see his promises, uh, you begin to see what he's done for others before you and I, uh, you begin to have faith awakened because every one of us has been given a measure of faith. Uh, but how many knows uh, that when you let that faith lie dormant, it doesn't do much for you? you. But that's what Paul told Timothy. He said, you got to stir up that gift inside of you. He said, I understand this. Uh, he said, I've watched your life, but I've watched your family. Uh, I've, who, I've watched who you've been connected to. Uh, I know what your grandma had and I know what your mama had, but I also perceive that it's in you. But if you don't stir it up uh, and notice with me, he would have never stirred it up if he didn't have a reformed mind. There's some things lying inside of us today uh, that needs to be stirred up. But the reason that they're not stirred uh, is because if we're not walking around, if I could say it this way, uh, we're walking around with stinking thinking. We are to, we are to be men and women uh, that understand the mind is the place that is first addressed by the glorious gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. We need to understand this, and I've taught this before, but let me revisit this just for a moment. Uh, man's soul is made up of three essential parts, the mind, the will, and the emotion. But notice with me, this transforming message of the Lord Jesus Christ is in the first place uh, it comes to through our eyes and through our ears, and it enters into our mind. Now, this is not just an intellectual message, but please hear me. We need to understand if we are going to be men and women of faith, we are going to be men and women that understand the gospel has came through our eyes and through our ears. It has touched our mind and we have come to a place where we have been persuaded that it is the truth of God's word. Now, what does all of this really mean? Notice we find that when Paul went about from place to place reasoning in the synagogue, in Acts 28 and 23, we find that when he went about, he was convincing them from the scriptures. He was entering into the synagogue and he was speaking to them so that he could penetrate their mind. Tonight, you and I need to understand there has to be a penetrating of our mind with this glorious gospel. And we have to remember this. It's not just a gospel of salvation, but it is a gospel of peace. It is a gospel of rest. It is a gospel where you and I can by and through the Holy Ghost not have to live a life of defense, but we can live on offense. And if there's ever been a time where we needed men and women of God to live in an offensive manner, it is now. What does that really mean, preacher? It means this. Jesus said to his disciples, he says, it is expedient that I go away. Because when I go, the Father will send he, the Holy Spirit, who is the comforter. He will come and he will empower you. He will equip you. But not only will he empower you and equip you, but he will do this. He will teach you, but yet he also will show you things that was and is and things to come. Can I tell you today, 
This, what we're seeing played out on the global stage, should not catch a man or woman by surprise that is a man or woman of faith. If you have read the Bible and you have got there where Christ has been speaking into your life, it comes to your mind, it touches your heart, it touches the inner man of God, you know this. When we see everything that we're seeing, go back to Matthew 24. When you read that and you see everything that's happening, we are to do one thing. The writers of the New Testament tells us we are to look up for our redemption draws nigh. Can I tell you today, we are closer now than we've ever been to the return of the Lord. But the problem is uh, that we, and we are taught this in scripture as well, that when you think not is when he will come. Can I tell you, the world has never thought he's coming. But one of the most devastating things that we find right now, there's a church world that doesn't think he's coming. And when you get to that place, you realize, uh, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the Son of Man comes. Uh, We're seeing everything laid out. We could spell it out for you tonight, and we can show you this is happening, this is happening. It's all marking up. It all looks like it. But yet, at the same time, we're just going about doing whatever. Uh, There is no urgency in our lives. Uh, But can I tell you, uh, you and I need to understand, uh, not only do we need the peace of God, uh, but we when we get the peace of God, it brings us everlasting strength. Uh, why do I need everlasting strength? Uh, it's because when I have the peace of God, uh, it brings something to my mind uh, that settles into this body and into this spirit man uh, where I no longer become anxious about the things of the world, uh, but I begin to be passionate about the things of God and I realize uh, that I cannot leave a harvest standing in the field uh, and you and I begin to live in a different manner. Can I tell you, it's not okay uh, that we come to a place in America, especially in the midst of all of the uh, abundance that we have, uh, and we see a generation dying prematurely all around us, uh, but yet we get more upset uh, because something didn't go our way or we didn't obtain that one thing that we wanted, uh, but yet we do not get upset at all uh, when we see day after day in our newspapers uh, where another one was lost to drugs, uh, where another one was lost to the evil of this world. Uh, We have become so callous to it. Uh, But can I tell you tonight, uh, we need the peace of God uh, in our minds, uh, but also we need the everlasting strength uh, to quicken this mortal body uh, where once again uh, we would say it's not okay uh, for us to come to the house of God Sunday morning uh, and it just be all of us that's always there together. Uh, But we need to see somebody uh, brought in uh, and says, Lord, I've been to the highways and the byways and I've compelled them to come in. Uh, Listen, that means going and loving the unlovable. Uh, That means getting down in the molly grubs uh, and saying you can make it. Uh, Listen, uh, we've got more to do, but until we get the peace of God in our minds, we will never move in the everlasting strength of our Father. I know about right now you're wishing somebody else was preaching. I'm sorry, I only had a few minutes. Please hear me. We are in a place tonight where we need to understand what is the real definition of peace. Uh, Peace is this, freedom from any strife or or, or dissension, freedom of the mind, uh, freedom from annoyance, freedom from distraction, freedom from anxiety. Uh, It means in a state of tranquility uh, or serenity. It means in a place of stillness. Can I tell you, some of us, you need to get to a place where you're still in your spirit. You're more concerned about an alien coming and abducting you while you're sleeping tonight than you are about reaching somebody for Jesus. Heaven help us. Peace brings about full circle that you know what, no matter what may come my way, I will stand and I will be victorious. You say, oh, but preacher, what if it gets this and what if it ends up being this? Listen, can I, I, I don't, I don't want to die. I, I like living. I'm enjoying life. But I have to go back to what Paul says, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So why in the world are we afraid? I'll turn around and preach back here maybe. What I'm saying today is our mind has been overran by all kinds of demonic influence and forces that's telling us, listen, I've never seen the likes of it. Even when I read through history, I've never seen the likes of it. 
men and women. Oh, I can't make it. Oh, I can't make it. That is their anthem. But I come to the word of the Lord and I find that the Bible says, come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden, and what? I will give you rest. If you don't have rest tonight in your spirit, it's your fault. Oh, you don't want me to go down that one, but please hear me. If you don't have rest at night, it's nobody's fault but your own because you're trying to take care of it. When God says, you just bring it to me, let me have it. He says, I will take care of you. Now, I understand we're all human and I, I don't master that. Trust me. I have my share of sleepless nights. I have my share of probably days of a little bit of high blood pressure. I, I don't know. I don't put that cuff on me. I don't need to know that. I don't need to worry about that. Please hear me. But I have to understand that when I get tired of carrying it, and if I just give it to him, he says, I will do what you cannot do. And that's why... The prophet Isaiah is writing in chapter 26, and he simply says, you know, for the one that will keep their mind stayed on the Lord, you can live in a total different realm than everybody else around you. Here's the thing that I've learned through the years. Negativity loves company. And if you want to be one that is full of unrest and uncertainty, just hang out with negative people and watch them steal the life out of you. But if you get around somebody that is filled with the peace of God, they are going to be people that have the joy and the, re and the strength that comes by and through the Holy Spirit, and you'll be sitting there in just a little while. You'll say, you know what? I'll, you'll have the same attitude that Caleb had when he was 80 years old. I can still take that mountain. Please hear me tonight. The reformation of the mind could not be overstated of the importance of it. Let me go just a little bit further with you tonight. Notice with me. Paul writes to the church at Corinth in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, Verse 18, he's talking to them and he simply says, the preaching of the word or of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. There's a lot of people tonight that would simply say, preacher, you're foolish because how is it that I can put my faith and trust in a man that I've never seen and I can have peace that passes all understanding? You say, that's the most craziest thing I've ever heard. Well, don't knock it till you try it because can I tell you, when I put my faith and trust in him, I can rest in the midst of darkness. Notice Paul was telling them, he said, listen, you know what? He said, here's the deal. You need to understand. You have to realize where the greatest struggle is in your life, even after you are saved, and that is this. It is the battle of the mind. Romans chapter 7, verse 24 tells us this. It says, I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity into the law of sin. And elsewhere, notice he also says this in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 4 and 5. He says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds against all the things that rise up and try to upset us and our rightful man. He says, we wage war and we bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. What he's simply saying is this in these two passages of scripture. He says, I know to do right. He says, I've had an encounter with God. He said, let me remind you of the day that I was on the road to Damascus and I had an encounter. I know he's real. I experienced him. He came, he touched my life. I was even blind for three days. But Ananias came in because he had a vision by the Lord. And he came in and laid his hands on me. And I received my sight. And then I was filled with the Holy Ghost. He said, I know God's real. And he said, I've encountered him. And my life has done a complete turn since that moment. And I'm now, I'm, I'm telling and I'm preaching this glorious gospel that I used to kill people for. And he says, now, he said, even though I find myself in this place, he said, there is a war in my members. 
And the only way that I walk in victory over it is if I get to a place where I have a reformed mind, where I continually keep my mind stayed upon the Lord. But then when he's writing in 2 Corinthians, he simply tells them this. He says, listen, folks, I've walked a few miles. I've did a few things. I, I've seen a few things, and I've experienced a few things. But he says, listen, here's what I've learned to do is every time there is a thought that's coming in, I bring it into captivity. I do not give place to the enemy in my mind. It's called living a life of discipline. Of understanding that right now, please hear me, we do not need individuals to be distracted and full of uncertainty, but we need men and women that is filled with the peace of God and where they are also walking with the everlasting strength of our Father. So how do we do that? I mentioned it a few moments ago, but let me mention it again in Romans chapter number 12. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. How do I renew my mind? Can I tell you today? There's a few things I'll give you very quickly. Number one is this. You and I have got to come to a place where we understand that prayer and fasting cannot be substituted with anything else. Let me give you a couple of quotes that I, that I keep close to me, that I can refer to at times. Leonard Ravenhill, he made this statement. He said, I think the ideal Bible school would be one without classrooms. Instead of being taught by men, students would assemble to do nothing but pray eight hours a day. The only book in the school would be the Bible, and the only teacher would be Jesus. Students would simply sit at his feet and learn to pray. Think about it. You say, that doesn't sound too exciting to me. Can I tell you tonight, we need to understand the value of prayer. My dear friend Gary Hampton is in heaven tonight, but he made this statement. Prayer takes on meaning when we understand the meaning of prayer. The reason that most people resist prayer is because they don't understand the meaning of prayer. Prayer is not a box that you check because you are a Christian. But when you understand the true meaning of what prayer is, it changes the dynamics And it changes your approach to prayer. What is prayer? Prayer is not simply studying and saying thou's and these and saying God I need this or God I need that. No. Prayer is entering into a place of communion with your heavenly father. Where you sit at his table and bask in his presence. Sometimes no words is even needed. It's just sitting in his presence. When was the last time that we cleared our schedule just to pray? But yet, we desire his presence. Here's the most amazing thing that I think we have forgotten. About 3 o'clock in the afternoon on a particular day, the earth grew dark. And all of a sudden, something happened that could not be explained by men. There was a veil that was about four inches thick that even 12 yoke of oxen could not tear apart because of how it was sewn together. And all of a sudden, when Jesus simply said, it is finished, that veil was rent from the top to the bottom And men was given an open invitation to come and to sit in his presence any time they desired. So why is it that we don't accept the invitation to sit in his presence? If you and I are dealing with a troubled mind or a troubled spirit, please hear me. No message is going to fix you. No counselor is going to restore you. 
But if you will go sit in the presence of God, you can be made whole. Because in his presence, please hear me, is the fullness of joy. Please hear me. When you are in his presence, darkness can't dwell. But peace abounds. We need men and women filled with the peace of God. Secondly, tonight is this, and we experienced it just for a moment, but we have gotten to a place where we don't even understand how to operate and move in it. But if you really want to experience the presence of God and you want the peace of God to overshadow you, you and I are going to have to learn once again how to get into a place where we're living a life of praise and worship. Let me pause for a moment and speak to you concerning what happened in this room as they were singing tonight when they began to sing, I don't have anything really fit for a king, but I will give you a hallelujah. What changed in this room? In that moment that hallelujah was expressed, it wasn't been expressed to anybody horizontally, but it was positioned and focused in a vertical manner, and it is identified in the heavenlies. The word hallelujah is identified as worship in the heavenly realm. A lot of the things that we're doing today in the attitude or under the umbrella of praise and worship doesn't move God at all because it's all about horizontal things. It's all about this, and it's all about making this. But when you get to a place where it's not even about any of this, but it's about, okay, I'm going to give him something pure, and it becomes vertical, it, all, it touches heaven, and all of a sudden the atmosphere has changed. And guess what happened in this room? Maybe you didn't realize it, but if you'll pause and look back on it right now, what happened? There was an umbrella, there was a blanket of peace that came in this room. Anybody feel that? Or am I just losing my mind? There was a blanket of peace in this room because can I tell you that when you touch heaven and he comes down, peace comes. Let me help you. If you don't know anything else to say this week as you're in a place and saying, God, I want my mind to be renewed. I want my spirit to be. I want to walk in your everlasting strength. So, Lord, I don't really know how to get there other than this. I'm going to be in your word. And I'm just going to simply give you a high praise. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah. Do you hear me? It changes the atmosphere, and what happens, it makes the devil nervous because he realizes, you know what, I can't stay around here because there's something happening. There begins to be an illuminating light, and illuminating light begins to penetrate the darkness. Can I tell you that the, the, there is only darkness allowed to stay when we refuse to allow light to enter? But when we enter to that place of prayer, that place of worship, can I tell you tonight, and I'm going to bring this to a close real quickly, when we began to fall back in love with the Word of God. David said this. He said, it is a lamp unto my feet. It is light unto my path. Can I tell you something? If you ever walked in a place of darkness and you didn't have a light, you welcome a light. You love that thing when you get it. And when you get to a place where you begin to have the Word of God and it begins to illuminate your pathway, can I tell you, it changes everything. It's one thing to be in a place of darkness. It's another thing to be in a place of gross darkness. It's one thing to walk outside when it's nighttime, but it's another thing to walk outside or to find yourself in, in, a, in a position where there is no penetrating light whatsoever and you are just in a blanket of darkness. About that time, you're simply saying, man, I, I need the word to be a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Can I tell you, when the word is present in your life, you don't have to be bound by fear and anxiety, you know this, God is present. On a Wednesday evening, when our world is shaking and men and women are trying to analyze what's going on, I think it's safe to say that we need some men and women to operate and to stand in the everlasting strength of our Father. And the only way we do that 
please hear me, is if we will make a decision to let our mind be stayed upon the Lord. I want to say this as what I sense in my spirit before we pray tonight. I think, I'm not going to say God told me, but I think, Maddie wants to come and play something. I think we very well could be entering into a season where what we're seeing play out on the world stage does not go away quickly, but I think it very well could begin to expand very rapidly. Which is going to make many things very unstable. We can be naive and we can bury our head in the sand if you choose. And you could simply have this attitude that I live in America. Please don't take that attitude. I sincerely believe tonight that the hand of the Lord is methodically moving and shifting and even pulling back in some areas to allow darkness to do certain things. Now, I truly believe that there's a remnant and there will be a Goshen for the remnant of the people of God. But I'm going to tell you something. Everybody that identifies as a Christian is not going to be under that umbrella of that protection. So I'm going to tell you something. The remnant church is much different than the church world. Our Bible teaches us that it rains on the just and the unjust. There's innocent people losing their lives today because of evil. But our world is shifting, it's changing. We read in our Bibles where it says everything that can be shaken will be shaken. Everything that can be burned will be burned. At the end of this thing, there's only one thing that's going to stand, and that's the church of Jesus Christ. But I'm a firm believer tonight that just as the Lord spoke to Joseph, he speaks to men throughout every generation. And he gives us words of warning. He gives us understanding. He gives us knowledge. And he simply says, there's a day coming when you're not going to have everything that you have. So make things ready so that things are available. I don't know if you've noticed over the last 12, 18 months, but your supermarkets don't have everything that you used to think you could go get at any given time. And can I tell you, we are getting ready to see one of the biggest supply chain issues that the world has ever saw, and it's orchestrated by evil. We often hear and talk about a Jezebel spirit in the church and talk about it in a sexual manner. I'm going to tell you something. Jezebel is something much bigger and much deeper than that, but there when you really go back and you begin to look at a Jezebel spirit, it is this, it always tries to manipulate and control something that it has no authority over. And that's exactly what men and women in high offices of government across many nations is operating under right now. And they're wanting to manipulate and to control men and women and to begin to try to strike fear, to silence them and to keep them. Can I tell you, they have an agenda. But I don't let their agenda scare me. I just know this. I have to have everlasting strength of my Father. And I have to have peace of mind that passes all understanding. And the only way I do that is if I stay connected to Him through prayer, through worship, and through His Word. But I have to caution you tonight. I wouldn't be effectively doing my job as a shepherd in the kingdom of God if I did not stand on the wall tonight and sound the alarm and tell you that evil is just beyond the walls of our nation. 
And I must also tell you this, that there's been breaches in our walls and they're not just beyond the walls of our nation, but they're in our nation. And at any given time, our world can change. Heaven forbid this is not the scenario, but what happens if you wake up in the morning and Indianapolis is burning? What happens in the morning if you wake up and Cincinnati is burning? What happens in the morning? Are you going to be going out of your mind or will you have the peace of God that passes all understanding? What happens if on the news network you see where there's been this explosion or that explosion there's been this or there's been that or what are you going to do how do you, how are you going to respond it's important tonight for you and I to understand that the church is the vehicle it's the avenue that God has chosen to use and it is times like this that we can reap a harvest but only if we have a peace and only if we have an everlasting strength that doesn't come from man but that comes from him. It is in times like this where real colors begins to be shown. Over the last few weeks, the Lord has pushed me to my knees and I thought it was for other things, but I did not realize the gravity of the hour in which we was entering into. But I'm beginning to see. Tonight, men of God, women of God, please hear me. This is not a time to be filled with uncertainty. This is not a time to give place to a spirit of fear, but this is a time for you to understand that he's still who he says he is, and he will keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind on him. But not only will he give you perfect peace, but he will give you everlasting strength. How many knows strength is a good thing? But how many knows that your strength runs out? Chase some grandkids, you'll find out your strength goes, doesn't last like it used to. But there's some everlasting strength that we can tap into in this season. I pray that we have ears to hear tonight what the Lord is saying. Because I believe this tonight, if we'll keep our mind on him, if we'll trust in him, we will experience his power and his faithfulness as well as his glory. There is a lot of people getting ready to search for some answers, I sincerely believe. They need you. They need me to be the man of God, the woman of God that he's called you to be in this time. We can't be filled with the things that the world is filled, but we must stand in the everlasting strength of the Father. You know, that is the strength that helped Jesus make it all the way to Calvary. He made this statement, Garden of Gethsemane, weeping, crying. He said, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. But he tapped into the everlasting strength of the Father, and he was able to fulfill that which was set before him. I don't think any of us know exactly what's set before us other than this. No matter what it is, we will overcome because of who he is and because that he is in our lives. So tonight, don't be anxious. Don't be filled with worry. Know this, that the birds of the field, they don't sow, they don't plant, but yet he takes care of them. And for the ones that will keep their minds stayed up on him, there is, there is no reason to worry. Because if he brings us to it, he will also bring us through it. And we will 
come out victorious. So hold on to the promises. Keep looking onward and realize that the God that helped you yesterday is still the God that's with you today. And if he blesses us with tomorrow, we have a hope that tomorrow is going to be better than today. Amen. Let's stand all over the house if you would please tonight. Can I pray with you? Can I pray for you tonight? And as we do that, I want you to join with me in prayer. There is countless families that the enemy is tormenting tonight across this globe. Because of the evil, we know this, that there are those tonight, men, women, children, not only in Gaza, but the southern part of Armenia and other places I could begin to talk about tonight that is under siege tonight because of war. No foods able to get in, no water, no heat. The situation is dire for many. Here we are Wednesday, this began Saturday. The thing is, here's the reality of our day. There'll be babies crying tonight because there's no milk to put in their belly. It doesn't set well with me. Nor should it. But I read in my Bible where there was only a little cruise of oil and a a little bit of meal in a barrel and I know this God supernaturally can still provide for individuals behind enemy lines tonight I'm not asking for little things tonight I'm asking for big things I'm asking for God to do the supernatural so that life can be spared so that life can be brought into a place where there is an absolute unexpected reversal in many of these situations today. I'm going to ask you to join me tonight as we pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we love you. We thank you tonight that your word is good, that it is established forever, and that there is no changing of it. I thank you tonight, Lord, that I know of a surety that you are setting on your throne in the portals of glory and that there is one who is your son that is sitting beside you making intercession for us and we are forever grateful for that. But Lord, we're reminded in your word where it says that we have the privilege to come boldly to the throne room of heaven making our petitions known and today we're not bringing you anything that you are not all aware of but at the same time we bring it before you in faith knowing this that you are the giver of life and that you are the one that was the sustainer of life and there is nothing that's too hard for you and today father on many battlefields across this globe there is innocent men and women and children that we cannot get to but you supernaturally can so Lord I'm asking I'm asking for you to open up the storehouse of heaven and bring provision to children and to mamas and to the elderly as well I pray that not just physical needs would be met but spiritual needs tonight those that do not know you that's in harm's way Lord, tonight I pray for a holy visitation to come to them. Let them have an encounter with you and let them surrender their life to you. 
For Lord, I know that some of them may only have moments left on this earth. But Lord, I don't want them to leave this earth without you. Lord, I know also you're able to stay the hand of the enemy and you're able to bring a hand of protection over them. Lord, I pray. Lord, I don't have the wisdom. I don't have the knowledge that's needed to even pray correctly in some of these areas. But Father, I pray your will would be done. And I know according to your word that your will is that all men would come to repentance. But Father, today we also know this. There are those actively moving in the Middle East today that have given themselves over to a reprobate mind that is beyond you touching. Lord, I'm praying right now that you would stop them in their tracks, destroy them by the hand of God. But for, Lord, the innocent that's there, Lord, I pray that a shield of protection would be upon them. Lord, I pray. I pray for... the little strip of land that you deeded to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Lord, I pray that it would just be protected tonight. Let evil fall on its face. Lord, I pray for the precious people of Armenia that is starving tonight. Lord, I pray that evil would suffer a devastating blow. Lord, I pray supernatural intervention tonight to come to the precious people. And Lord, tonight we pause and we pray for our nation tonight. We know that with inside of her tonight, there is many cells that feel emboldened and empowered and are itching to bring devastation and destruction. But Lord, I'm asking not that we deserve it, but Lord, I'm asking for grace and mercy to be upon us. I'm praying that your hand of protection would be once again steady. Let evil be exposed. And Lord, as the people of God lift up their voice, Lord, I pray that the peace of God would rest upon them. And Lord, I pray for a, just a infusion of everlasting strength to come. Let there be joy. Let there be peace. Let there be rest. But Lord, let that position us into the place and the positions that you've called us to. Help us to lay between the porch and the altar and fight this war on our knees. Lord, I pray that your people would not be anxious. Pray that your people would not be disturbed by what they hear, what they see, so the enemy could gain a foothold in their life. But Lord, I pray that that which we hear and see would move us to be the church that you've called us to be, to be positioned, to be prepared, to be ready. To operate in compassion and love as only you do. So, Lord, I pray. I pray for safety. I pray for protection. But I pray for strength. And Lord, I pray as Solomon prayed give us wisdom, give us understanding. Now go with us tonight, I pray, as we fulfill the duties and the responsibility of the remainder of this week. Lord, I pray that we would not miss doors of opportunity that you have opened, but let us share this good news. Let us take the time to love and minister to others. Lord, let us come back Sunday morning. Let us come back ready to worship, but Lord, let us not come back alone. Let us come back with those that we have compelled to come. Let us bring them into a manner where they have an encounter with you, we pray in Jesus' name. And the church says amen.
and amen. Well, thanks for watching. I hope this message blessed you. And if you could, please check the description below for all of our links to our social medias. Um, and as always, check our page. You'll see all of our previous messages there. Uh, I hope this message again blessed you and uh, reached you where you're at. And thanks for watching. See you soon.